entry in our number one type of diseases that we have is through the respiratory tract. But the number two is through the digestive tract. There are 76 million cases of foodborne disease that results in 5,000 deaths a year in the United States. And as more produce comes in from uh, third world countries that we can't regulate, you know, uh, their sanitation standards, then we can expect these uh, cases of uh, foodborne disease to increase. So this is a little background, so you don't have to copy this down, but there's a relationship between the body's digestive system and your immune system. 80% of the immune system is located in the digestive system, especially the small intestine. So lymphoid tissue, lymph nodes, Peyer's patches are collectively known as uh, gut-associated lymphoid tissue or GALT. And there are special uh, cells called M cells that will move the pathogens or the antigens across that epithelium so that they come in contact with the immune uh, tissues there, immune cells, and, and create an immune response to take them out. So your, your gastrointestinal tract is uh, just a tube starting at your mouth and ending at your anus. And um, it has a heavy load of uh, microorganisms. So diseases of the digestive tract are mainly of two different types, either an infection or an intoxication. And an infection is when the, you ingest the pathogen and it gets into your GI tract and then those, uh, let's say bacteria, most of them, uh, start multiplying in your uh, GI tract. And with an infection, where it is actually the bacteria that is making you sick, then you usually run a fever. And the other type is an intoxication. And that is caused by you ingesting or eating something that the bacteria has released toxins into. So they're already there when you eat that food. And uh, they don't need bacteria multiplying because they've already multiplied in the food to make the toxins that you're taking in. And in that case, if it's an intoxication, you're less likely to have a fever. Gastroenteritis is inflammation of the stomach and intestinal mucosa. It's caused by eating food or water, taking in water with pathogens, be bacteria or viruses, or these preform toxins. So if bacteria are producing toxins, they're, they're already there in your food. <coughs> Staphylococcal uh, food poisoning, Coprix is Staphylococcus aureus. It causes a food intoxication. So you're going to eat something that has that bacteria toxin, which is an enterotoxin, meaning it's affecting your GI tract, and you get it in contaminated food. So something that the sat out and these staphylococcus were in there and then they start multiplying in the food and a part of, the, of their metabolism is producing these toxins <coughs> and, and it can cause this uh, food poisoning. So bacteria that cause uh, enterotoxin, which is actually an exotoxin, but they, an exotoxin that, affect, that affects the GI tract or staphylococcus, vibrio, escherichia, and Pinsel can all produce that. For staphylococcus, it's pretty hardy. The vegetative cells, which are your regular bacteria that you stain and you see, have a very high resistance to heat. They can tolerate 30 minutes at 60 degrees centigrade, which is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, 
the toxin that they produce is also what they call heat stable and it can uh, tolerate 30 minutes of boiling. <clears throat> so you're not probably not going to get rid of it in the food. <clears throat> food in, on hand or found on hands and staphylococcus is found on hands and is easily transferred to the food. It's a normal microbiota of your skin and inside your nose. So if you prepare food in advance and it's not refrigerated, then it's a, it can be a potential source of a staphylococcal food poisoning. And there's uh, high-risk foods, custards, cream pies, ham, poultry products, potato salad's is a big one. Go to your picnic, have your, you know, they bring the potato salad refrigerated, everybody eats, you eat the potato salad that hasn't been eaten on the picnic table and an hour or two later come back have more potato salad and those bacteria have been multiplying because you put the bacteria in there probably when you were making your salad because you're it's on your skin and you're touching your potatoes and eggs and whatever else you put in there and mayonnaise is, is the base of it so. can you tell if there that something is spoiled with a staphylococcus? No, it doesn't smell any different, it doesn't look any different, it doesn't taste any different. So after you uh, ingest your contaminated food, the enterotoxin goes to the intestine and it enters the bloodstream and it stimulates nerves leading to the vomit center of the brain. And since it's an intoxication, we're talking about a toxin that's already formed when it comes into your body, then symptoms occur very quickly. <clears throat> um, so after you eat something with uh, staphylococcus uh, in it, the food poisoning usually, you're gonna get symptoms one to six hours after you eat it. Uh, it's not life threatening and you usually recover in 24 to 48 hours. <clears throat> So when you're taking your history, if you have somebody that ate something and they got sick quickly, staphylococcus is likely to get quickly. Symptoms are abdominal cramps, severe nausea, vomiting, and watery diarrhea because that toxin uh, causes the release of water. Diagnosis is based on symptoms and the incubation time. So between various food poisonings, staphylococcus uh, is the one that has, it, it comes on quickly. Facillary dysentery more severe form of gastroenteritis. It's also called dysentery. And the symptoms are abdominal pain, fever, a persistent uh, desire to empty the bowels, and diarrhea with blood or mucus in it. And bacterial causes of dysentery are Shigella, and some strains of E. coli, and then uh, Entamoeba histolytica, which is a protozoa can also cause a dysentery known as amoebic dysentery. Shigella and enterohemorrhagic E. coli both produce a toxin, which is an exotoxin called the Shiga toxin. Shigellosis uh, is a severe diarrhea caused by uh, uh, Shigella. Shigella is a facultative anaerobe, a gram-negative rod. And we used to have talked about if we had Shigella or Salmonella going on um, EMB, that how you would tell it, say, from E. coli, is though those two bacteria can't uh, you uh, can't ferment the uh, lactose to 
end product, so their colonies are clear as opposed to the ones that we're working with. Um, so um, Shigella is only spread person to person through fecally contaminated food and hands. The bacteria multiply in the epithelial cells of the small intestine, but the actual uh, disease is in the large intestine. Large intestine. Shigellosis is caused by four species of uh, Shigella. It causes an infection. Um, most uh, common in the United States is Shigella stonii. It causes a mild diarrhea. And Shigella dysenteriae, which is severe, uh, severe dysentery. With that one, you can get caused you know, you can get 20 bowel movements a day with abdominal cramps and fever. I don't think you'd be going to work with that. <laughs> Food that is contaminated with Shigella uh, dysentery causes. Um, Dysentery through the production of enterotoxin, which is that shiga toxin. Symptoms are abdominal pain, fever, watery stool with blood or mucus, and then of course you get dehydrated since you're um, having so much diarrhea. Diagnosis is recovery of the microbes from a rectal swab, treatment antibiotics, and oral rehydration. Seminalosis is uh, uh, diarrhea that's caused by an infection of bacteria, such as Salmonella enterica. And uh, remember, Staphylococcus aureus made a toxin, so that was an intoxication. And Salmonella is an infection. So when you see the symptoms from uh, Salmonellosis, it's not, you're not going to see it for 12 to 36 hours after you've ingested the bacteria. And it takes more time because it is now actually not a toxin, but the bacteria that's making you sick. So those bacteria have to multiply inside your body before they uh, cause a problem. So that's why it takes longer. Uh, 50 of the 2,000 serotypes of salmonella uh, cause foodborne infection in part of the United States. And the intensity of the salmonella food poisoning depends on how many uh, bacteria you actually ingest. And um, the bacteria replicate in, again, in that intestinal mucosa, and they can pass through the mucosa at the end cell. And then they enter the lymphatic and the cardiovascular system and spread the, that can spread them to different Their vir Salmonella's virulence factor is that it also can uh, replicate in macrophages. Symptoms are nausea, abdominal cramping, watery diarrhea, and fever and possibly vomiting after 12 to 36 hours. And for Salmonellosis, the symptoms can last for more than a week. Diagnosis is to isolate the pathogen from the patient's stool or any leftover food that might you know, have been the problem. And treatment is uh, fluid replacement and uh, antibiotics aren't really useful for intestinal salmonella diarrhea. There's a mortality rate of less than 
And if you recover from uh, the seminal.